All right, folks. So I'm going to show you how I assemble these trusses on my own. One person uh, doing a 40-foot truss. I'm just going to give you the gist of it here. So uh, in order to connect these trusses, steel trusses to steel posts, um, and these are 40-foot span, I had to come up with a system here to do this uh, because I'm doing it by myself. Um, so doing it by yourself adds all kinds of extra challenges here. So, um, you know, you got to kind of come up with some tricky engineering or some redneck engineering, if you will. So the first thing I did was I made the sleeve to go over top of these posts, okay? So you can see the holes right here. This is where my truss will bolt in. I also weld the truss to the post. The post is a little rusty because it's rained a lot lately. It's just surface rust. This sleeve right here is what I made for this post, okay? This is a five inch by five inch post, so I made a sleeve specifically to attach onto this, all right? Now, the next part of this system is I have these are pallet rack beams. You see those right there? So if you go look up pallet rack beams, the things you see in Home Depot and stuff like that, get them at discount steel places for like really cheap, like $2 a foot most of the time or somewhere around there. So <clears throat> what I did was I just took one, cut it in half, and then I made myself a arm here for a hoist. So you can see what I did, right? So there's the um, where the hoist attach. I have an electric hoist that attaches to this. It's a remote control hoist. Um, and then on back here, I have a clip that has a line that goes straight down the pole here and attaches. I have a piece of uh, half inch thick angle iron right there that will attach uh, to the base plate here with the bolt. And then this line with the turnbuckle, how I tension it is, this line goes straight down to a turnbuckle and I tighten it. And then, so there's a line, a tension line on the back of this that keeps this. So when the hoist is pulling right up on a piece of steel, Obviously, even though it's it's there's a sleeve here, it would have a tendency to move forward, but that line keeps it from doing that. So that's what this line is. It's actually a pretty important part of this, right? So you can see what I did here. I took a piece of plate steel, made a sleeve like this, goes right over top, right? Now, what's cool about this is the way I made it is I made it so... Obviously, these five-inch posts are, you know, they're kind of unique as, as far as the size goes. So it's not like, you know, you're going to always have five-inch posts. But what I did was I made these detachable so they can attach to these plates here. So if I want to make a different size post, say for a four-inch post, like a wood post or something like that, I can always uh, make a different sleeve, you know, to put on a different post. So that's what I did here. So then what will happen is, is this thing will bolt onto here, right? And then I will do the same thing, another sleeve down there on that post, and I have another hoist, all right? So I have two hoists. What I do with the truss here is I do it in a 20-foot section because steel you know, is sold in 20-foot sections. So I do the first 20 feet of the truss, and what I do is I run a string line from here to here. So it's a 40-foot string. I tighten that sucker, make sure it's as straight as possible. And then what I do is when I lift my steel up, okay, with the hoist here, in the center of the truck, I have another um, manual winch. Right, that picks up the second part of the steel. So I have the remote control that'll lift that side up and then this here I crank it up and then I just line it up with that string line and there's a steel plate right there. You can see the steel plate and then what I do is I will tack the steel to the um, to that plate right there being lifted by this winch if that makes sense. So they'll have this winch lifting it up and then I will have this uh, plate here holding it in place. Now this plate is welded to a piece of steel pipe that is welded to a railroad track plate. It's like a tie plate here. 
And you can see what I did here. Another unique thing is I have feet at the bottom of these because one thing that's important is to make sure because I'm standing on top of my truck. Okay, I have a truck as you can see here with the lumber rack on it. And then I made this platform here. It's actually pretty crazy. I'm pretty proud of this thing. Also out of pallet rack beams. But I have this big platform here because I'm also going to be using this truck to put my sheathing on my house and everything. I, I, this is going to be a multi-use truck, okay? And I have this big platform I can walk on here. And then I have this platform here that's higher so I can get to the top of this truss because I have 14-foot posts here, okay? So these are 14-footers and those are 10-footers. Um, I had to make a bunch of stands, okay? I have a bunch of railroad plates. I collect a bunch of old steel over here. So I just collect a bunch of steel. I have all kinds of old railroad plates and things like that. And they're really good for bases. And then what I did was I took carriage bolts and I have a threaded uh, nut that goes through these and I use these as feet, okay? Because one thing that's important is to make sure that these things are level because you obviously want your truss, the top and the bottom cord, to be level that's pretty key, right? So what I did was I put feet on these so I can make micro adjustments on these these base plate or these uh, these stands that you will call them, okay? These stands, and then once I adjust these to make them completely level, and they're lined up with the string line because I put them like every six or seven feet on this truss. Uh, to make sure that the steel doesn't because the steel will bow. That's another thing steel bows So if you have a 20 foot piece of steel and you just go one section to one section It's gonna bow like crazy. So what you do is you have these stands here that are every you know five or six feet I don't remember I exactly I just I know I said six or seven feet, but whatever But I have these stands here and I place them and all I do is I see that string line and I, I make a mark with that string line and make sure that the steel matches up with that string line on each one of these stands, okay? So once these stands are in place, then what I'll do is I have screw holes here where I will screw these into place so they are bolted down. Basically, they're, they're anchored down to my truck. My truck is the anchor, okay? And they are anchored to the truck. They're not going anywhere. And then what I do is I tack weld my top and bottom cord here to these these stands okay so these stands are placed all the way down that's what took me the longest on the first truss here is I had to make like eight stands plus I had to make this center piece right here plus the winch it's all kinds of crap man there's a lot that goes into this but knowing that I was going to make six of these suckers and if you saw my video on how much these truss cost if I were going to order them it's worth the work okay because I'm saving over 10 grand on this so I did all that and now I have a system to set up these trusses and I can weld trusses um, I could do this on 20 footers easily because the truck itself is 20 foot long so I can do it on just on the back of my truck for a 20 footer but the 40 footer I had to make a, a little scaffold there out of wood so I made a wood scaffold and uh, then I also use more of these pallet rag beams to attach from there to there that's how I get to my second 20 footer and on top of all that what I do here is I have these slings here, they're attached to this truss and I have um, a rock climbing harness that I wear and I clip myself in when I'm up here so that way when I'm walking back and forth, because I'll tell you what, man, you'd be surprised. You could walk off this truck no problem um, if you're not paying attention, especially with a welding hood on and stuff or you trip over something um, and you, you're gonna have a real bad day, especially up here, cause I'm pretty high up here. So I have like a series of harnesses and everything else that connect me in as I'm doing this and that's how I welded this truss together. So 40 foot truss, one man doing it by himself, um, no helpers. I don't have any special equipment. I just have a truck and I made some, uh, I guess I do have special equipment, but I didn't have to spend a lot of money on the equipment. Even after spending the money on the hoist, all the materials for this, as you can see, I reuse these pallet rack beams. Even after spending all that money and all this time here, I'm still saving over 10 grand on these trusses. And, you know, I should have them done within a month. So, you know, look at it this way. I'm making 10 grand in a month on my house here, if you want to look at it that way, from paying myself for the labor instead of having these trusses shipped from wherever on a semi um, because we wanted this done a specific way. You know, that's how we did it. So that's how it's done, folks. And I'm going to get back to work here because I got to set up for this next trust. But I just thought I would explain it um, because it's kind of weird.